So we have been making huge progress on our fake Lamborghini Diablo drift car. I've always wanted to build a supercar, but let's be honest, that's way out of our budget. So instead, we took a huge risk and bought this Lamborghini Diablo kit car for $10,000 off Facebook Marketplace. And we decided to slap it on this BMW E36 chassis. So we chopped the whole body off the E36 and mounted the Lamborghini chassis and it actually worked. And in the last video, we dummy fit our 13B rotary motor for the first time and it looks right at home in that engine bay. And of course, I've been reading a bunch of your guys' comments and I have seen a few asking about the rigidity of the car because we've cut so much metal out of this thing. But the really big thing that's gonna add the rigidity back into this car is of course the roll cage. Now this is pretty much being built to be a track only car. We may register it in the future who knows? And on the track, at minimum, you need at least a half cage with side intrusions. A roll cage is a metal framework that's installed inside a vehicle, particularly race cars and high performance cars. And its primary purpose is to protect the occupants in case of a rollover or crash by reinforcing the structural integrity of the vehicle's cabin. They come in all shapes and sizes, and for our Scambagini build, we're taking it to the next level. And right now, I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. So this is my good friend Toby from Chimera Development and I called it Chimera Development the other day because I'm kind of nearly. dyslexic. Close. I nearly got it. <laughs> and uh, you brought a friend with you as well. Here's our friend. So we are literally taking it next level with this roll cage and we are, I think, 3D scanning. We are. We're going to be 3D scanning the scan bikini today. So, Chimera Development, they're actually really good friends of mine. We've been drifting together for a while, but basically, these guys scan the interior, make the cage on a computer, but I'm going to run you guys through this whole process start to finish in this video. And by the end of it, I think the Lamborghini is going to have one hell of a roll cage. So maybe first of all, talk me through what you see in the chassis and the points you are going to want to like yep. put the cage to. Absolutely. So for a full cage, we'd normally obviously run a main hoop on the floor and then front legs down to somewhere in the passenger footwell. Because this is a little bit different and we're sort of We've cut the A pillars, so we think we're going to land there and just try and get it as wide and give a lot more of that structure back into the car. And then the, we'll go to the strut towers as well? Yep, so we'll go to the rear strut towers, we'll go to front strut, strut towers, really just try and triangulate all of that, that structure back in because you've cut your firewall, you've cut your boot. Sounds very official. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have fun as we do it because all the stuff is science and maths, which is like, you know, was always boring in school, but I guess first things first, we should scan. Let's do it. I'm so excited for this. The 3D scanning tool that Toby's using costs $40,000 and it basically creates a 3D model of your car. This allows Toby to design extremely accurate and tight fitting roll cages within a special software on his PC. Chimera Development provide ready to weld in roll cage kits so if you're in the market, definitely hit them up. Plus you get to look at Toby's cute butt while he's scanning, which is a nice added bonus. So it's been about 20 minutes now and he's about 80% done on the scan which is pretty cool so it doesn't take a crazy amount of time. A few more scans to make sure that we have super accurate data and this is the end result. It's pretty insane. And just like that, the car is now fully scanned, thank you to Toby. And uh, now we have to load the car up into the truck, not on my trailer because the car doesn't actually fit on my trailer, it's too wide. Luckily, these guys bought a truck that we can load it into and we're gonna take the car down to BSC Performance. We're gonna design a cage, baby. I'm so excited. But you right now go away and sit on a laptop for probably seven hours. Yep, all night. <laughs> <laughs> and design the cage. doesn't let me sleep. Luckily, I hooked him up with some kamikaze energy drink, so he is good to go for the rest of the night. <laughs> but by tomorrow, he's gonna have the cage built. You're about to see that process right now, but we're gonna load the car in the truck and we'll see you guys tomorrow morning at BSC Performance. So we loaded the Lambo into the truck and Toby worked through the night until 3 a.m. designing our new roll cage, though I must admit, I was doing some pretty hard work of my own. And I've got to say, I was absolutely mind blown when Toby sent me this video the following morning. Safe to say, I'm pretty excited to get right into it. So we unloaded the truck at BSC Performance and got right to work. This place is absolutely insane. They build some absolutely crazy cars, including Bogger's 1,300 horsepower 180SX drift car, amongst many other cars, but... We have the printout of the cage right here, and we, when I say we, you have the pleasure of putting it together. <laughs> well, it. making it. Making it. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the process quickly? Toby prints out and gives me instructions. 
So many instructions. Yeah. That's my roll cage right there. In That's, a... That is your roll cage Jeez. in data form. Literally it gives us cutting list, tells us how many lengths of steel we're gonna need and nests it on the steel so there's minimal wastage, which is really good. This is our steel right here and we're gonna somehow turn this into a roll into cage. That. Toby told me some really interesting information. Our roll cage, in total it weighs 58 kilograms. For all you Americans, you're gonna have to go ahead and do that calculation <laughs> in terms of what it is in pounds. But it is 58 kgs we are putting it of steel into the car to make this roll cage and I'm just absolutely pumped. Oh look at that, 26.3 pounds. There you go. Thank you Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> we got one hell of a process on our hands in the next couple of days. Yeah boy. No time like the present. Let's go. First things first, we throw all of the measurements onto the steel based on what the printouts from the cage design tell us. Then we make the cut and head over to the pipe bender. So we've got our list here. Yep. We have our order of bends, the measurement for the start of each bend, and then the angle that we need the final bend to be. Obviously these spring back, so it gives you the spring back angle. So what you push it to, and then when you release it, it springs back. So it gives us everything that we need to now bend our main hoop. So good. The crazy thing is Chimera Development actually have a machine on the way that will bend the tube and laser cut the notches, but it didn't quite arrive in time, so we're doing it manually for my cage. So the boss man has trusted me for some crazy reason doing one of the bends on the main hoop which is only the most probably important part of the cage. So if he stuffs it up it's not my fault, it's his fault right? <laughs> do we have spare material? Yeah, I... we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay and we're aiming for 35 on this gauge. Let's push this. Yeah. So stop at about 33. So we'll see how good you are because we want 33. Yeah. So let's see how... Zero. 33.3. Love it. <laughs> I'm so happy with that. Look at that. One main hoop. Main hoop. Done. Absolutely stoked. And we repeat the whole process for the rest of the kit. Cutting, notching, and bending. And before long, we have all of the main bars and we're ready to start fitting some of the main parts of the cage into the car. And after many, many hours of hard labor, this is half of our cage. But it's the main half and the half that we're about to fit into the car. So it's all the main bars. So basically the process we just did, if you were doing that by hand and not on a computer, not 3D scanning, how long would it take? Three days. At least three days. Yeah. I mean, if it was one, in my shop it would take two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so it would take a long time because obviously there's lots of manual measuring and bending and yes. this isn't an easy cage to build for this particular car. That's insane, that's what I mean, it's completely custom. We were only going to cut a dummy for it, but we're throwing caution to the wind and we're just going to go ahead and freaking tack it. Send it. Yeah, let's yeah. just do it. We're here. See, that's why I love getting together with people like Bogger because we both have terrible ideas and it just, it just works. I'm losing my voice, but I'm so freaking pumped for this. Main hoop is in place. Now we add the rest of it in. Most nervous time as always, tacking the first tack and the first bars in the cage. Putting these roll cages together is basically like doing a puzzle but for adults. And having the picture of the cage from Chimera Development in front of us means that even a novice like myself is still able to piece the cage together. Piece by piece, as the bars went into the Lamborghini, we started to get a clearer picture of just how awesome this cage looks in this car. So it's basically midnight right now and we have the main structure of the cage in place. And I have to say, it actually looks absolutely phenomenal. Like the way these legs come down here, once this is all closed in and everything's painted, and the idea for the colors that I have to actually paint the cage, like it's gonna look absolutely wild, but look at that, the door bars and everything, and it fits so freaking snug everywhere, which is crazy. Like when we shut these doors, it fits perfectly up against our nice door cards. We're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> not yet. So next up, we're going straight into the next section, our roof bars. Why are they positioned the way they are? So because you don't really have much room. Nope. We've put them this way so you've got helmet space. Yeah. But still protected. Yeah. Exactly right, which is very smart and something I would not have thought of when building a cage. Mm. 
That is a freaking work of art right there. That is so cool. Right, why are you, what are you even doing here? <laughs> it's all me. Ooh, look at that. That's crazy. That took like 10 minutes. Yeah, that was probably 10 minutes. That was actually yeah, 10 minutes. So good. It just fits together like a puzzle. That's insane. Hopefully you guys can see on camera how freaking epic that looks. And that's literally only half, maybe a little bit more than half the cage. That's the main structure done now. Then we shut the door. And look at that. So the door bars run down here and perfectly like tucked up against our door cards so nicely. Look at that. So good. Now it's starting to actually look like a race car. I know. Not just like a cool Lambo kit car. I'm just so freaking lucky that I have friends like Bogger and Chimera Development because it literally is taking this car to the next level. It, it looks like a proper race car now. So good. Holy moly. <laughs> That's enough work from you. I think we can take it from here. You reckon? I think we have to. Yeah. You gotta run this shop. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah. Bogger literally gave up his whole weekend and he works here like 24 7 to do it, to do this Lambo with us. So I'm just so thankful, dude. Insane. I just want to put a seat in there. Yeah, okay, we can put, put a seat. seat. Yeah, Let's yeah. Seat. Let's tuck a seat in and yeah. just have a wee sit down. I need like a 24 hour nap, but yeah, let's do that. Time to load up and head back to our shop. I want to give a massive thanks and shout out to Bogger at BSC Performance and well, Chimera Development, he owns both of those businesses, and Toby from Chimera Development. What an absolutely insane roll cage. I'm just so freaking thankful. Please make sure you go and subscribe to Bogger's channel. Clearly, as you can see, they do some amazing content and it's always awesome when mates help mates. But now, Bogger and I are going to load up nearly 1 a.m. It's one of those nights. <laughs> But uh, we've had a good time. I actually love hanging out with mates and building cars. And when you can build cars like this, it makes it even more special. Bro, look at it. It'd be a cool job to have, wouldn't it? It's not a bad maybe. job, bro. Not a bad job at all, even if I eat noodles for a living, but make cool cars and content. But uh, we're gonna load this up. I'm gonna see you guys in the morning at our shop. We're actually gonna end up finishing this cage on our own, which is the beauty of these ready to weld cages, is you don't actually need these guys. You get everything you need. The kit turns up at your house, ready to weld in. I'll see you guys in the morning. You, <laughs> bye. And we are back in the shop and I have finally recovered with some sleep after those long nights building this beautiful cage. And honestly, I'm absolutely obsessed with the setup. Look at that, I've cleaned the interior of the car a little bit so we can get a better perspective of how this cage looks. But like, look at it, it's absolutely beautiful. The nicest cage that I have ever had, potentially too nice for me. And that's not even all of the bars. We still have all of these bars to go into this cage. But we're not putting them in yet because we need to be able to get in and out of the car and be able to move around things. We've still got firewalls and stuff to put in. So for now, this is as far as we're gonna get on the cage. But I'm not quite done yet in this video. I do like my videos to have a bit of substance for you guys. So if you're enjoying it, hit that like button. Consider subscribing, but we're gonna carry on. Chuck this thing on the hoist and move on to the back end of the car and sort out the fitment on this thing a little bit better if I can. And I've also been marketplace shopping and I've got a little treat for you guys, especially for you, because you've hung around this far in the video, I've got a little something to show you guys for this car, but we should almost be able to see kind of the completed look and vision of this car by the end of this video, if that makes sense. So let's chuck this thing on the hoist and let's get to work. So we're down the back of the car and we're gonna fix the issue of the fitment hopefully in the rear wheels. So this currently is an 18 by 10 wheel with a 40 millimeter spacer and slight adjustment outwards. But let me show you how we're gonna get it further out without using too much spacer. So under the BMW E36, we basically have three pivot points on the trailing arm. One up here, one down here, and then one at the front of the trailing arm. And they basically give us the pivot points to get the alignment right on the rear wheels. So basically to push the hub outwards, we replace this arm with an adjustable arm. We've got our adjustable arm up here and then up here 
We're gonna push this out as far as we can. We actually sell adjustable brackets uh, at Two Step Garage, but unfortunately they're so popular, they're all sold out. They sell out within like a week of putting 10 pairs on the shelves every single time. So for now, we're gonna cheat a little bit and I'll yank this point out as far as I can go. And then back here, we'll push these points out as far as they can go. And hopefully that'll give us some better fitment down the back. Also, I just want you guys to bear in mind, everything that we're putting in the car at the moment is just for dummy fitting. I wanna prove the concept first with these budget parts that I had laying around before we go ahead and purchase everything brand new. These arms, I wouldn't run these because I've got rubber bushes down here. I like spherical bushes and everything, so all the brand new stuff. That we're gonna order once we've confirmed this works. We'll all have spherical bushes and everything in it. Look, this is just one that I randomly made here so that it's nice and adjustable. So we use what we can to make sure that it actually works. Then we buy the good stuff. As much as I wish stuff like this would work perfectly first time, when you're doing a build that no one else has done in the world, there's always gonna be a bunch of hurdles you have to go through to get to the end result. And this rear wheel fitment is definitely one of them. So our science experiment kind of worked and kind of didn't. As you can see, the wheel is completely on the piss here, but I actually got the information that I needed by doing this. So one thing to look at here is the wheel is massively towed in, but the bottom of the wheel is actually in line pretty much with our wheel arch, which is the one thing we really want to look at because the top arm, I couldn't quite get enough extension out of, whereas the bottom arm was the one that we custom made and I actually could get all the extension I needed. So if we could get the top arm the same length as the bottom arm, effectively, our wheel would almost be flush with the guard. And remember, this is only the 40 millimeter spacer on here at the moment. We have 80 millimeter spacers coming. That'll give us a little bit more adjustment to play with in the arm because we don't want the arms all the way at the end of their extension. That would just be rubbish. So we're gonna be able to get the fitment bang on. Now, to fix the toe in that it's got at the moment, we're basically gonna have to customize the trailing arm. And what we'll do is we'll cut a section out of the trailing arm and weld it back together. That'll basically bring the wheel back to zero toe and then we'll have our adjustment back for the toe adjustment. So all in all, a successful experiment. It just doesn't look great right now. But if you look at it from this angle, especially because we have the coilover in the car, she is looking absolutely magnificent. Once we have that rear fitment dialed in, I cannot wait to see kind of the final look of it. But of course, as I mentioned before, I have a surprise for you guys. So I was busy scrolling Facebook Marketplace when I came across this, which is a GT style wing. It's basically the exact wing that I wanted to put on this car because basically the style we're going for with this build is a Lamborghini Diablo GDR and they have these big flat GD wings. But the problem with this car, it's so wide at the back, you need a huge wing. And I actually thought there wasn't really much chance of me finding a wing off the shelf and would have to get one custom made. Basically, this is 1.8 meters from the narrowest point up here to the narrowest point on that side. And that's the kind of the size of the wing that you want. And somehow, I found this wing. It was dirt cheap and it's 1.7 meters wide. So it's slightly thinner, 50 mils on each side it will be sitting in but I think it's gonna work absolutely perfect for what we want. So because you've stuck around this long in the video, we're gonna go ahead and test fit the GD style wing. <laughs> Not bad at all. That looks freaking pretty sweet. Obviously that's probably not the exact position that we're gonna have it in. I think it's really important that we have it at the same height as the roof up the front as well. It'll probably be angled forward slightly a little bit more. It's hanging back a bit. So you want it perfectly flat, but man, that's pretty sweet. A little view from the front here really just fills in the rear end there. Definitely looks awesome because like basically the roadsters, the roof like here and then it drops down and there's just nothing at the back. Kind of like a ute. So having the wing there kind of just fills in the back end and makes it look like, you know, a little tougher. But uh, that looks absolutely phenomenal. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to leave this video. Oh, what a mammoth one. A couple of 3 a.m. finishes, but we made some insane progress. I think it's been like four weeks since I've owned this shell now. And look how far we have come with this thing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And we're not stopping anytime soon. The progress is gonna keep picking up. Our parts have started to arrive for the car, so we can actually start 
putting things together, which is sick. So massive shout out to my sponsors, Raceworks, SP Tools, Optima Batteries, Autobahn, and a massive shout out to you. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you in the next video, continuing to build this beast. Of course, the drift car is making a comeback really soon. I see your comments. Much love, guys. Thank you very much. You Cheers. Poosh. Bye. Roll cage. Rear wing. Crazy. So good. Ha <laughs> ha. Bye.